I'm talking about the homeless issue in Key West this morning with a man who probably knows the subject best because, yes, at one time he was homeless. Now, Sloan, you were sharing with us before the break the months that you spent sleeping on the streets. How did you finally overcome homelessness? Well, it was more than just sleeping on the streets to start with. A lot of times I'd stay, somebody would give me a room or a sofa or, or a floor to sleep on or a vehicle to sleep in, and not just in Key West but in other places. Uh, I stayed uh, for several months once at Florida Keys Outreach Coalition. Uh, I had contracted MRSA and nearly died and had emergency surgery in the hospital on Stock Island. Uh, I have stayed at Cots. And, uh, and I've compressed into several years what I just told you. So I arrived in late 2000, and in uh, 2000, and uh, in August of 2005, my father died. He was very wealthy. He was generous to all of his children. And when the estate settled the following Valentine's Day, 2006, I didn't have to worry about being homeless for a while. That's how I overcame it. If that had not happened, Jenna, I probably would still be in the same situation. Because, as I mentioned earlier, I was apprehended by angels. And they have me on a program. And they will not let me make money, you know, from, from anything I'm good at. I could, used to be I could wash dishes, you know, make eight bucks an hour or whatever, but you can't live on eight bucks an hour in Key West. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't get a room. Uh, I'm too old and out of shape now for that. So mainly they have me just basically, uh, you know, running for office and er speaking in ways that other people candidates won't speak because I'm not worried if I don't get elected or, or writing on my website or going to commission meetings, county, city, school board meetings, whatever, and saying things that have occurred to me during the meeting or before I got there, which generally are not going to be said by anybody else. And so that's what I do now. But because I was, I'm subsidized, you know. Uh, and otherwise, I would still be homeless, in my opinion. For me, one of the greatest disappointments, I've had others, is just, just personally as a man is, that I have this onus on me where I have all these talents, but I cannot turn them into money. I've written about 20 books which have not generated income. And in that way, I'm like a lot of homeless people. You know, they have these things inside of them. Everybody's story is a little bit different. Some of us are, are very obnoxious. And you know, you don't, I don't even like being around them. Okay, I try to avoid them. If I see them, I try to go around them. Others are quite enduring. Uh, they're not all, you know, obnoxious. Did you feel like people avoided you when you were homeless? Uh, no, not really. Uh, sometimes uh, I felt like uh, some homeless view people viewed me as an anomaly because they knew I was a lawyer. They knew I came from a wealthy family. They were wondering what I was doing on the street. I didn't go around causing trouble. I didn't get drunk. Uh, if I could find money for a beer, I'd drink it. I can't drink it all now. I'm, I've become allergic to alcohol. It makes me physically ill after about an hour if I drink a beer. So I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, and it never re really was that kind of problem for me. I didn't have an addiction like you see around here in the streets and in mainstream. Having been homeless, experienced everything that you experienced, what do you feel needs to be done to decrease the homeless population? Well, I told you I was going to drop you out of your chair when Again. I answered that question. <laughs> I really don't think there's much that can be done, and I'll tell you why. Because Key West is unique. It's at the end of the world. And it is attractive to homeless people. And so you turn one around, if you can. The long-term ones are very hard to turn around. The new homeless are much easier to turn around. But the city is mostly focusing on the ones that have been around a while. They want to get them out of sight and out of sound. They want to get them into a, 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 a 24-hour place. But they can't force them to stay there. But they may turn a few around. But where are they going to live? Because they can't afford market rate rents. And the, and the housing authorities 
housing, subsidized housing, it's got a waiting list. So where are they going to go? Where are they going to live? How are they going to pay market weight rents? Maybe one or two of them will turn around enough to do that. Most of them won't. They will need to continue to be subsidized somewhere. Do you put them in Florida Keys Outreach Coalition? Well, they may accept them, but only if they are not drinking or using. And they don't detox. You have to come in there with clean urine. Well, they won't let you in. So they have, and they're letting them in the cots, stone drunk, okay? And the new shelter, I don't know whether they go, how they're going to segregate them. I think that they have two shelters. But you have the new, these other people coming down here because this is a magnet. You have them, if you graduate them, you get them off the streets. Where are you going to put them where they're not still on the streets? And then you've got the incredibly high relapse rate for addicts. It's 95%. Okay? Extremely high. And so they may go for a month or six months, and then they, they, they go back to their drug of choice, and they're back on the street. They lose a job, they're back on the street. To sum it up, I really don't think there is a solution that will make anybody happy. And I'm not going to say it any different because that's how I see it. And I know this terrain because I've been there. And I've been working in this terrain even when I wasn't homeless. I've been involved, mm -hmm. writing about it, talking to homeless people, talking to the government officials. So. Well, Sloan, you are a very interesting man with a very interesting story. And I thank you for sharing what you've shared with us this morning. And if you want more information on Sloan and you want to see more of his writing, you can just check out his website on the bottom of the screen. I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages. <laughs>